Here's the exact strategy for how to grow quickly on TikTok, even if you're starting from zero, because no, you are not too late. And make sure you stay till the end where you'll also learn some of the most common mistakes creators are making that are stopping them from seeing the results that they want to see. Believe it or not, the first step you're going to take to grow on TikTok is not going to be create content. Your first step is to study the platform. If you want to dominate a platform, you'll need to know the ins and outs of that platform. What makes it breathe? What makes it come to life? How do you study TikTok? By consuming the content from a strategic approach instead of a mindless approach. TikTok is a video app that was designed to suck us in and scroll for hours on end, and it succeeds in doing that. So you need to create separation of when you're mindlessly scrolling and on the app to be entertained from when you're opening the app to be intentional and to study the content that you're coming across. When you're being intentional, you wanna be looking for what works, what doesn't work, what keeps you watching? What sort of things capture your attention from the very beginning? Is it the shot itself? Is it the text that's popping up? Is it what the person says? And on the flip side, what makes you scroll past a video? At what point does a video get boring to you? What could have been done to make it more engaging? What gets you to send a video to a friend? Are you coming across any trending sounds or audios that are being used multiple times? If you spend just 30 minutes a day even, studying the platform when you open it up instead of immediately getting sucked in, you'll be surprised how quickly you'll pick up on things to adapt into your own strategy. And naturally studying will come natural to you over time. As you continue to study the platform, you'll notice you'll start getting ideas for your own pieces of content to create. So later in this video, I'll teach you how to organize your ideas and plan out your content calendar. But first, Let's prepare your profile for visitors. But Millie, I, I wanna start posting, I wanna create, I just wanna grow. Here's the thing, Meredith. If you skip this step, you'll regret it when one of your videos go viral and you don't get any followers from it. A problem that a lot of people run into is they jump straight into the grind. They're posting and posting and boom, one of the videos go viral, woo, eh, wrong. One million views later, you haven't gotten any new followers from it. So what happened? There's obviously a disconnect that's happening from your video to your profile. So what's really important is how you set up your profile before you even start posting. How can you convince someone to follow you simply by glancing at your page or at least increase that percentage of people who do land on your page to follow you? Let me break everything down for you. You have your profile photo, username, name, bio, and link choice for when that option is available. Your profile photo and your username. These go hand in hand. You want both of these to be clear on who you are and what you want to be known for. So if you wanna be in the health and wellness industry and you wanna be known for smoothie bowls and awesome recipes, maybe your handle will be Jade Wellness and the profile photo will be a picture of you in the kitchen holding a smoothie bowl. You know, create the atmosphere of your page right away from those two things. Then you have your name. This is the part that shows up on the very, very top of your profile. Some people discount this right off the back, but it's actually more important than you think. This is where you want to put how you want other people to find you or discover you because this section is extremely search friendly. If you go to TikTok right now and you search smoothie recipes, then you toggle over to the tab that says users Anyone who has the term smoothie recipes in their name will appear in those search results. So what's that title for you or phrase that will help people find you? Social media coach, book talk, coffee reviews, modern home decor. What is that phrase that someone might actually type into the search engine to come across your account? Put those juicy terms, keywords, whatever you wanna call them into your name. Now let's get into your bio. At the time of filming this, TikTok allows 80 characters in your bio, which doesn't feel like a lot to me when you compare it to Instagram's, what, 150? Now, how you craft your bio is going to look completely different depending on what your goals are with your page. But just in general, the most common mistake I see people make with their bios is making it about themselves. Wifey, mother of two with a fur baby, wine and coffee fanatic, catch me in a Snuggie. 
I don't know what that was, I'm sorry. Instead, what I like to do and what works really well for me and many other businesses and creators is communicate the value that you and your page provides when somebody presses that follow button. So let me pop up some examples. Teaching you how to grow on TikTok and Instagram. Teaching you how to become a full-time content creator. Even just social media tips. Pretty straightforward. Now, this works in all sorts of niches and industry. Book talk, fitness, home decor. All of these profiles tell someone what they will gain if they choose to follow that person. It's kind of like a marketing strategy in a sense. Like, us human beings, we're subconsciously selfish. We make decisions for ourselves, things that'll help our personal gain. So even selecting and choosing to follow someone, we follow them when we feel like it's going to benefit us. So you wanna be able to communicate in your bio how somebody will benefit from following you. I hope I explained that well. Now, I know not everybody does this. There are successful creators and influencers out there whose bios literally say something like under construction or nothing, but this is simply just a strategy to increase the likelihood of somebody pressing the follow button because it's communicated to them clearly what the gain is by following. Then finally, when you hit 1000 followers, you will be able to add a link to your profile. If you're someone who wants to turn TikTok into a full-time thing or become a full-time content creator, then the link in your bio should direct your audience to either a freebie that passively grows an email list or a link where you can be making money like an Amazon storefront. Now, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of having an email list. And not just the importance of having an email list, but the importance of starting with an email list before you try to grow. Hear me out, hear me out. Just give me, give me like 30 seconds to explain the importance of this. Okay, I one time had a student come up to me and they're like, oh my gosh, Millie, I wanna gain 10,000 followers on Instagram. And I was like, let's do it. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's work on your branding. Let's get clarity on your goals, blah, blah. And then once we had clarity on goals, I was like, all right, let's make a freebie. And she was like, what? Like, I wanna grow on Instagram. I don't wanna grow an email list. Like, why are you making me do this? And I was like, trust me. So we made a freebie. It literally looked, took less than 24 hours. She made a free gift for anybody who follows her and they could download it and get fun, like fill in a bowl planner, right? So took less than 24 hours. She put it on her link in bio. And then after it was created, then we started to grow her account. What had happened was three months later, she gained 30,000 followers on Instagram. She grew her email list to 2,000 followers. And then she was like, you know what? I think I wanna start coaching. She had 2,000 people where she could email and she was like, hey, I'm starting a coaching opportunity that's related to this freebie that you downloaded earlier. And you know what happened? She sold out with one email and quit her job and became a full-time coach because we started with an email list. Anywho, I'm not gonna explain in this video how to create, start an email list. I do have this video that I'll put in the card above. You can watch that after this video. It explains the whole email list freebie thing, how to do it all. So you can watch that one after this, but let's, let's get into growing on TikTok. Okay, so I've touched on this a few times and I think it's finally time we talk about this. Picking your niche. It's impossible to teach a how to grow video without this phrase coming up. When I started my creator journey, I was watching every video on YouTube on how to grow on Instagram, how to grow on YouTube, just whatever. And I would literally roll my eyes anytime I heard somebody say, pick a niche, pick a niche. I never know what to say. Because it's everywhere. Now, the reason it's everywhere is because it works. Do you have to pick a niche in order to be successful? No, you don't. At least not on TikTok because the algorithm is much different over there than it is for Instagram and YouTube. But it can actually help the algorithm understand you more if you do pick a niche. For example, if you just love coffee and all of your videos are about coffee and espresso, like recipes, how to pull a shot, frothing milk, latte art, that's going to help TikTok be like, oh, okay, you're a coffee espresso account. So we'll show your videos to people who like that sort of content. Done. Whereas if you're just posting anything and everything, it's going to be a lot harder for the algorithm to understand who to push your content to. Not impossible, just harder. So how does one pick a niche and what do you do if you don't want to pick one or you're a multi-passionate person and you don't know, you can't. Let's start with the definition of niche. Niche is defined as a specialized segment of the market for a particular kind of product or service. 
So we have specialized segment of the market. This is where you get categories like fitness, fashion, wellness, foodies, you know? But you actually wanna get more specific because the rest of the definition says for a particular kind of product or service. So if you're in the fitness niche, what type of fitness? Who are you creating your content for? So a complete niche would be at home fitness for moms, budget friendly home decor and inspo, Amazon fashion for women. Then you create content around that niche. Now, what do you do if you don't want to pick a niche or you're, you're a multi-passionate person and you don't know how to narrow down your interest? Well, if you wanna be strategic, you can focus more so on the who instead of the what. So who do you want to reach and why do you want to reach them? Maybe you want to inspire people to live a healthier lifestyle or you want to reach college students who want to escape reality for a little bit. Ask yourself, who do you want to reach and what sort of content would that person want to see today? Then start creating content like that. Now, if you don't want to be strategic or you find that being strategic is actually stopping you from creating, then don't pick a niche. Don't be strategic all the time. Just create, film anything and everything. Document your day, your food, your dog pooping, like just create. The more you create, the more you'll find what feels true and authentic to you. Like just scroll back to some of my first YouTube videos. I didn't have a niche. I was literally telling ghost stories on an abandoned train in one video, then doing a drunk boyfriend tag in the next. Just. Enjoy the creative process of discovering who you are as a content creator and take the pressure off yourself of like having to do everything right and just do everything. Okay, so let's say you have your niche picked out. So what type of content do you create from there? My current strategy is rotating between three types of content. I have search friendly evergreen content, trending and degaff my search friendly and evergreen content this is content that is not reliant on trends and can be relevant a month from now a year from now etc these are videos that i could batch maybe 10 videos in a day and it doesn't matter if i post it today in two months in a year that video will still be relevant so like this video you're watching how to grow on tiktok this video will probably still be relevant a month from now, six months from now, a year from now, because it's not reliant on a trending audio. Another example of search friendly content or evergreen content that's outside of my industry is recipes. Recipes will just pop off anytime, anywhere, unless you're like doing pumpkin spice recipe for Thanksgiving day, you know, like that's obviously very specific to a day, but if you're doing like smoothie bowls, I don't know why I'm on the smoothie bowl example today, but if you're doing smoothie bowls, like that's search friendly content anytime. So it could be like smoothie bowls using acai powder or smoothie bowls using pataya, right? So that's search friendly content where anybody could look it up anytime. If you wanna get some ideas for how to come up with this search friendly content, use current search engines. I like to just go to TikTok and type in my niche or industry in the search engine and see what's recommended because that's gonna tell me what people are currently searching for. So if I look up TikTok, maybe what's recommended is TikTok tips, TikTok trends. If you look up home decor, see what that recommendation is. Tap on an item, scroll down, see what those videos are about. There's even this section that says others searched for. And it's gonna give you literal video ideas right there that you can create. Another tool that I like to use is something called Answer the Public answerthepublic.com, I think you're limited to like three searches a day, two searches a day. So just put in a keyword and it's going to spit out common searches on Google using who, what, when, where, why, other things. And it's gonna give you some of the top searches using that word. These search friendly videos and evergreen videos are the videos that I include a call to action on. So after I do maybe a talking head video where I'm like, this is how you grow on YouTube. At the end of the video, I'm gonna say, Hi, I'm Millie, I'm a social media coach. Follow me for more videos like this or follow me for more YouTube tips or comment below some common YouTube questions that you might have. That's what a call to action is and the search friendly videos or the evergreen videos that I make, 
Those are the ones that have the call to action. Next, we have trending content. Trends definitely help you get a spike in views and a spike of traction to your account. I don't rely heavily solely on trends because they come and go. And if I'm only making trending content, I find myself on the phone 24 seven, like what's today's trend? What's the next trend? Oh, I gotta film this, I gotta film this. I'm so many like, I don't wanna create every day. I really don't. I wanna create maybe once a week maybe once a month. <laughs> so I like to do like more search friendly evergreen content stuff, but I'll adapt trends whenever I have that spike of energy. So that's why about a third of my content is more so trending content. Now a way to keep up with trends is by you doing a simple search in TikTok, looking up hashtags like hashtag trend alert or hashtag trend watch finding creators that basically only post, hey, this is a trend coming out, this is a trend coming out, because your goal with trends is to try to be on like the first peak before the trend takes off. You wanna be one of the first originators. So looking at those hashtag trend alerts or following people like Jackson's Tips, that will help you stay more up to date with those trends as they're coming into peak and hopefully you could get on it before it peaks and before it takes off. So let's say a sound is taking off and there's a specific way to use the sound. It's like, you know that sound that was like No, okay. Where it would like loop where somebody was like, they would look at the camera and be like, oh, let me move you. And then all of a sudden it would loop. Did that make sense? Have the most success with that sound, you would do the loop. You would take part in the trend of having that loop happen visually, but maybe you would change like the text to be something more relevant to your niche. I'm explaining this horribly. Let me think of something else. Let's say you come across a sound. There's a trending sound. Everybody's using it a specific way where it's like, oh, you open and shut the door. And every time like you pop up text on the screen of something mean somebody said to you, right? So you like do that. That's the trend. You change the text of like something mean that somebody said. And then you use the sound as like background noise of you like, let me teach you this one thing and talk to the camera. Like that's not relevant to the trend. So try to, when you use a trending sound, be relevant to what goes with the sound. It helps you see the most success with the sound. I know some people like to put the trending sound, like any trending sound on the background of all their videos, which is great, but I've found you see the most success when staying relevant. And then finally, the third type of content I create is like DGAF content. This is just whatever the heck you want it to be. This is where you get to be you and your audience gets to connect with you. No, these might not perform well, from an analytic perspective in the beginning, but I found that having some creative freedom where I don't feel bound to rules and strategies helps my mental health a lot and helps me avoid burnout. Plus, as you start to grow, people will continue to follow you for you. So it's great having that sort of casual content where you can really build a community and connection with your followers. Now, bonus tip when it comes to creating content, I love doing series, serieses or playlists on my profile. Like I'll have a playlist of just all influencer tips or all TikTok tips and really creating content that is bingeable to your audience and it's easy to find organized. So having some sort of series that's like part one, part two, part three, definitely keeps people engaged and helps people discover what you wanna be known for. Maybe I do a continued series where it's like, TikTok updates you didn't know about, part one. And then I do that week's TikTok update. Next week, TikTok updates you didn't know about, part two. And then people start to know me. I was like, oh, she's the TikTok updates girl. You know what I mean? So creating a series can not only help create bingeable content, but also can help people understand who you are, what you wanna be known for. All right, now that we're talking about creating content, let's talk about how you can organize your content and create a content calendar. As you're doing your research and you're coming across ideas or videos that inspire you, it's important to one, save audios that you wanna use for later. I like to save videos into collections. So my business profile, I have two profiles. I have my business profile, which is the It's Modern Millie one, and then I have my personal one, which is I'm not gonna tell you because it's a burner secret account. So on my Instagram or on my It's Modern Millie account, this is the account where I am doing my content research. I follow people within my niche. I'm saving videos that are related to my business. So I have a collection that's like, okay, TikTok tips or sounds like trending audios to use. 
Instagram tips, content creator tips, influencer tips. So I have different collections for future video ideas that I wanna make. And if there's a trending audio that I come across on like my personal account, I'll send it to my business account so that I have like trending audios all organized in one place. Then what I would do is I would take all of those ideas or even the ones in my head on my phone, I take it over to my laptop because I don't like being on my phone. <laughs> I actually hate being on my phone, especially because my business is solely on my phone. I try to do all my business on my laptop. So when I'm doing my user research, I'm mostly doing like TikTok on the computer. Like I'm not scrolling on my phone. I'm on my computer, I'm doing my SEO research or like the search friendly words. I'm doing my SEO research on the laptop, plugging in my content into a content calendar. I do have this content calendar. This is a Notion content calendar that I used to do a 30 day TikTok challenge where I basically posted to TikTok two to three times a day for 30 days, which helped me grow 20,000 followers in 30 days. This content calendar, I will link it below for completely for free. You can use it. It helped me so much organize my ideas. Basically there's a section for brain dumping all your ideas. You can put a link to where you got the inspiration from, add notes of like, Ooh, this is how I want to adapt it to my niche or my industry. It helped keep all my ideas in one place. And then when I was ready to film it, I would move it to like the creation section. And then after it was filmed, I would schedule it onto the calendar so that I could visually see what videos I'm working on and when I wanted those videos to go up. So that notion content calendar helped me a ton. And if you're somebody who wants to be a little bit more organized like that, or maybe you hate being on your phone all the time and you'd prefer to be on a laptop, I will link that down below. Now that you're filming your videos, how long should your videos be? Here's the thing, you see a lot of people say like, oh, the sweet spot is between like five and seven seconds or over 11 to 15 seconds. Anything in between that, your video will fail. Like you see a bunch of people saying, it needs to be this, it needs to be that, it needs to be that. There's no magic answer because here's the thing. The video length that performs well for you is going to look different than the next person because it's on two different topics. Sometimes like fitness videos where it's, hey, this is your workout of the day. Workout of the day fitness videos perform best when they're over two minutes long because it shows a complete workout routine, right? Versus if you're doing like a smoothie bowl recipe, maybe those actually perform better at 20 seconds because you could just put all the ingredients on the screen, do some B-roll in the back, Boom. So the video length depends on what topic the video is about, what industry you're in, even the purpose of your video. Think about what's the purpose of your video. If you're educating, obviously you can't educate within five to seven seconds. That, that doesn't really do anything. That doesn't provide value. So if my goal is to educate, my video will be longer and that's okay. And it will probably perform well because I want it to be as educational as possible. There's no magic number here. Video length depends on what the purpose of that video is. And obviously you'll just be testing what works best for you and how fast paced you can make your videos. So obviously I'm not going to just sit in front of the camera and be like, this is how you grow on TikTok and talk really slow and breathe. <sighs> like I'm going to cut out the pauses and try to keep it as fast paced as possible, but no magic number here. So then the question is how often should you post? Here's the thing. The more you post, the more you grow. That's just like a general rule of thumb. If you're somebody who is able to post two times a day, every single day for 60 days straight, do it. You're going to see rapid results. That consistency is amazing, but that's unrealistic for a lot of us. That's unrealistic for me. And I even have a team of people. <laughs> I can't do two times a day. That's exhausting for me. So when you think of the word consistency, this, this is important. Everybody says, pick a niche, be consistent and provide value. That's how you grow. Yes. But consistency doesn't mean post every day. The word consistency is what sort of cadence can you post and realistically keep up with for at least 30 days? Is that three times a week? Monday, Wednesday, Friday. If you could post Monday, Wednesday, Friday consistently for like 10 weeks, that's consistency. You don't have to post every day. Obviously, again, the more you're able to post, 
the quicker you will see results. So it depends on how quickly you want to grow, how much time you have, but all of us are gonna have a different consistency because we have different lifestyles. Some of us, maybe we're nurses who are working the night shift, so we don't have the ability to like post all the time. Maybe we're parents and we have like five kids and it's hard to create content when you're juggling five kids. Find a consistency that works best for you. Try to challenge yourself if you can, but don't be unrealistic with the goals that you set for yourself. Be gracious towards you, your mental health, your physical health, and maybe, maybe task one is posting once a week. Now, when you're posting, what hashtags should you use? Again, I'm not gonna be like, if you use this hashtag, you're gonna go viral. That's not a thing. It's not like there's a magical hashtag where it's like, oh my gosh, I went viral, holy crap, everybody uses hashtag. You want to use hashtags that are relevant to these three things. What your video is about, what your video looks like visually, and who you are, your profile. What is your profile about? If I do a day in my life, video where I'm like, this is day in my life as a YouTuber. First thing was what the video is about. So I'm going to do hashtag day in my life, hashtag day in my life as a YouTuber, hashtag YouTuber life. Okay. That's what that video is about. Second thing was what is in the video visually. So maybe in the shot is like my YouTube setup. So I'm like, okay, hashtag YouTube setup. I show my coffee, right? Maybe I show a specific coffee recipe in that day in a life where I'm like, oh, and then I made this coffee. And it's actually really good. You do this much almond milk and this da da da. So maybe I'll do hashtag coffee recipe. So like it's visually that's like, you have coffee in there, you have San Diego, you have YouTube set up, right? Visually, that's, that's what you see. It's still kind of relevant. And then third, what your profile is about. So I'm gonna do hashtag social media coach, content creator, hashtag YouTuber, right? So those are kind of the three things that I use within picking hashtags. To help you find relevant hashtags, what you're going to do is look up your niche or industry on TikTok. I know, it's so easy, right? And then you're gonna to toggle over to the hashtags tab. This is going to give you a list of hashtags that are relevant to your niche and industry. I will say this tip, but I haven't tested it myself to know if it works, but I have heard some people say like, oh, when you look at this list of hashtags, pick like two that have a big number and then two that have like a little number where it's like, oh, only a thousand uses. So like mix up the number of hashtags based off on how many uses. I'm hesitant to give that tip because it sounds like an Instagram tip that's like five years, no, nah, three years old and like, that wasn't like, it, it turned out to be like an outdated tip. So I'm hesitant to give that tip, but that's something I will say just because I have heard it a few times at this point and it's something that you can test if you're interested. Now let's go into some common mistakes that I see creators make. Common mistake number one, trying to go viral every time you post. I, I'm guilty of this. I am guilty of this, y'all. Especially when you're in that, like, that growth mindset where you're like, I need to grow, I need to grow, I need to grow. You're trying to go viral every time you're like, how can I go viral? How can I go viral? When the thought process should be, how can I show up for my audience today? If you like 80% of your energy goes towards providing value to your audience and value is defined in four ways, educational, entertaining, relatable, and inspirational. So if you can create content for your target audience that's educational, entertaining, inspirational, or relatable, then you're doing good. 80% of your energy goes towards that value focus. And then maybe 20% is like, okay, let's try to like go viral with this one. Let's try to go viral, trending audio, trending sounds, right? But stop trying to go viral every time you post. Focus on the value and remember what's valuable to you is going to look different or can look different than what's valuable to your target audience. You want to think what will my audience or the people that I want to reach, what do they find valuable? And then from that mindset, create content that caters to that. Mistake number two, going back and deleting posts. TikTok doesn't want to like push creators that are constantly like creating and then deleting, creating and then deleting. And for Instagram, maybe this is the same, but for Instagram, when you delete, completely delete posts, you're deleting data basically that you were feeding Instagram. of like, hey Instagram, this is how you categorize my account. This is who I am. This is the type of stuff that I'm posting. And then you delete it and then Instagram's like, okay, who's this person? Who's this person? 
and then slowly but surely your stuff is getting less and less reach because you're slowly but surely deleting the algorithm that was like building up your account of what you were known by. So like that's kind of the complex side of Instagram, but could be similar for TikTok. So just don't delete your posts. Just let them live there. Enjoy the creative process. Remember my old YouTube videos, they're still up. They have nothing to do with what I do now, but they're still up. They're still up. Mistake number three, not going back to study your posts. I recommend doing this monthly. Go back, study your posts, study analytics, look to see what posts performed really well, what posts didn't perform well. How could you make that post improve? How could you recreate success? And for the ones that didn't perform well, that doesn't mean, oh, I need to stop doing this. No, it just means maybe that approach of that concept needs to be shifted. Maybe the hook in the beginning didn't capture attention. So you're not looking at what succeeded and what failed. You're looking at what did my audience enjoy and how can I improve this content to cater to my audience's values or what my audience values. So always go back to study your posts. I do it monthly. It's just a great habit to get into. Now, a quick disclaimer that I probably should have said in the beginning, but no, while we're here, I know there's millions of TikTok tips and tricks and strategies out there. I'm not claiming it's my way or the highway. The strategies that I'm teaching in this video are simply what worked really well for me and worked well for my students. So these are simple strategies that you can start implementing today. And as you post and as you grow, you can continue to figure out what works best for you, your goals, your niche, and your audience. Number four common mistake is using irrelevant hashtags. Let's not use hashtag FYP. Okay. We don't need to do that anymore. We want to stay relevant to the video it helps TikTok categorize your content. It helps push your content to the right people. So use relevant hashtags. Mistake number five, not replying to comments. Y'all try to reply to every single comment. One, it shows that you're building community. It shows that you care about the people who are following you, that you're building genuine relations. And that's really what TikTok and social media is all about is like creating those connections and connections you wouldn't be able to make anywhere else really. And two, when you reply to comments, you're also feeding the TikTok algorithm or you're telling TikTok, hey, this video is doing well on engagement because it's getting this many comments. So it helps benefit your video and how that video performs. It helps create and build community. And I love replying to comments with a video. So if somebody asks a question in my comment section, reply with video, make it a series because if that one video goes viral and you have a response with a video, so many people are going to go to that video and then they're going to see that video and they're going to go to the comments and they're going to see the next video. So replying to comments with a video makes like this chain reaction of bingeable content where if one video goes viral, it just like creates a chain reaction. It's pretty cool, a uh, fun strategy to do, but reply to comments. Even if you're not replying with a video and you're just replying saying, thank you reply to comment. Now, if you want to see exactly how I grew 20,000 followers in 30 days, then watch this video here where I documented the entire process. You'll see how I set up my TikTok strategy and the backlash that happens when a video of yours goes viral. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Follow your joy. Bye.